Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Thursday Thought, I want to talk about universalism. On the Fellowship website, on the About page, it says that we are non-denominational Mormons and Latter-day Saint Universalists. But what does that mean? I've talked about the non-denominational side before, and I can talk about it again if you guys want, but I really want to address the universalist side because that's a part that we don't really talk about a whole lot. In my mind, there are a couple different extremes, but the two I want to bring up right now are Calvinism, the idea that there's an evil, wicked God that created hell and then made a bunch of people he's going to force into heaven. I'm sorry, well, made some people he's going to force into heaven, a bunch of people he's going to force into hell. There is no free will. You're, he, he created evil just to damn people. It's pretty ridiculous in my mind. Then on the other side, you have this idea that God, it, it's extreme universalism. God is going to force everybody into heaven. It doesn't matter if you don't want to be there. You're going to be there and you're going to like it, whether you like it or not. And I feel like in the restoration, we can find a middle ground here. But the thing that these two extremes have in common is the idea that God is forcing us to do something. He's either created us without free will and we're all just damned or saved, not because of any choice of our own. We're just pre-programmed to, to do what we're going to do. And in the other, we become gods to God because he's going to create the perfect heavens to make everybody happy. And so he merely exists to placate us. I, I think that these two extremes are utterly ridiculous. I believe that we are here, as the Bible says, as gods that will die as princes. That's Psalms 82, and Jesus quotes that in the Gospels. So then, what is the universalist Latter-day Saint message? What, what is this middle ground? I don't believe, well, first of all, I'll say, I believe this idea of punishment, you know, that, that there has to be a hell. I think that's a very human idea. I've been hurt, and so therefore you should hurt as, as I have hurt, so you can know what that feels like. Grace is the opposite. Grace says, you hurt me, but rather than hurt you back, I want to understand where you're coming from. I want to know why you hurt me and see if I can heal your hurt so that you can move on and not hurt anybody else. And that is Matthew 5, where he says, where God says, I love your enemies. Do we have the grace to do this? I'm going to share a quote here from a prominent universalist advocate by the name of Jose Balu. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that last name correctly. He said, you love your, I'm sorry, your child has fallen into the mire and its body and its garments are defiled. You cleanse it. You array it in clean robes. The query is, do you love your child because you have washed it, or did you wash it because you have loved it? And that, to me, is the middle ground that we're looking for. If we are gods, lowercase g, as the Bible says, to come here to die as princes, then we have fallen into the mud. Does God love us because we've washed ourselves clean? No, because we can't wash ourselves clean. It's the atonement of Jesus Christ that washes us clean. All we can do is accept it and then do our best to grow in grace as moved by the Holy Spirit. We have a choice. We can choose to follow the Holy Spirit or reject it. We can choose the atonement of Jesus Christ or reject it. Now, some people will say, well, that means you're saying that if you, if you don't want it, then you're damned. You're going to hell. God's not forcing you into hell. God doesn't force anyone into hell. I believe that damnation is to stop the flow of blessing, the stop of the light of Christ shining from us. And God loves us so much that he said, look, if you don't want this light, stay away from it. In Latter-day Saint theology, there's this idea that during the pre-existence, the, the pre-this existence, I should say, the, uh, um, the, the pre-mortal existence, Everyone's bathing in the light of God, right? So we're all awesome. We're all great. We're all happy because we're just bathed in that white light, which does take away a bit of our free will. But some of us are so naturally against the light of God 
that one third of the host of heaven was able to say, we're perdition, we don't want this, we're walking away. Now, I know the scriptures say they were cast out, but in my experience, one thing I've learned is that if someone doesn't want to be somewhere, they generally just leave. If you're not comfortable in the light of God, you're going to walk away. So that one third of the host of heavens became perdition because they chose to reject the gospel of Jesus Christ before we even had an opportunity to come here. Can they repent? I don't see why not. Will they? No. That's why they're perdition. They've made their choice. And they're they're happy or miserable, whatever they are. They, they have come to the conclusion of their natural state. Now here in this life, according to Kabbalah, we are removed through a veil, if you will, using Latter-day Saint terminology, from that light of God. That light can shine through us to heal the creation, but in the darkness we can't see or appreciate that light. So, if we're damning people to hell here, is that a universalist message? I will say, yes, it is. Because what God is doing isn't judging us. John 3.17 says that Jesus wasn't sent to condemn us, but to save us. We're here to find out for ourselves who we are. We want to know, what are we like, absent the light of God? And there are some who, like Cain, became perdition. Because that's who they always were. We will become, in my mind, this is my own theology, this isn't binding on the fellowship, but I believe that ultimately when we are resurrected, we are resurrected to be who we've always been. The level of intelligence, the spirit body, the physical body, and the soul that is created once we're born again, all become the resurrected being that is the perfect summation of everything we always have been and always will be. Look at it like this. Here on earth, I know we, we like to judge people. We want to punish people for being bad. But we're like, well, we, we are animals, like it or not. We are a human species. And when we look at animals, to try, say you're trying to, to tame a, a, a lion. Okay, you're a lion tamer. At the end of the day, there's certain natural reactions that are going to happen because they're in our genetics. Is the lion responsible for that? I say no. And I believe that even though we as human finite beings have a hard time understanding that, and we say, hey, this person did this bad thing, we are rejecting the reality that we aren't in complete control of our bodies. When I get tired, if you talk to me when I'm tired, I start slurring my words, I, I mumble, I, I ramble, I don't make sense. Sometimes I will get angry, just like a child. You know, I'm little kids, they, oh, wow, you're really grumpy. You need a nap. Is that who I am? No, my physical body is taking over and I'm losing control. I need to go to sleep and be refreshed and wake up. That is what the resurrection is going to do for us. The reason why there's nothing we can do in this life to earn salvation is because we only have such a limited short life here and our bodies are corrupted and so they can't perfectly reflect our true selves but in our resurrected bodies we won't be hungry we won't be tired we won't have the physical and mental ailments that we have in this world when we look at the intelligence gap, yes, animals are intelligent. Yes, they're sentient. Yes, they have feelings. We as human beings believe that we are more evolved. That we have a higher sense of feeling, a higher sense of intelligence, a higher sense of everything. Do we? Or do we just look at things through a different perspective? Well, I want to throw out this idea that once we die and we regain our eternal perspective, we're going to look back at this life and we're going to look at it exactly the same way that we look at ourselves when we watch an old video of ourselves when we're two years old. 
the most sophisticated thing that we do in this life or things that we do in this life will seem so trivial to us at that point because we will have an eternal perspective. I think that in the next life, when we look back on our lives here, the thing that we're going to be most proud of and the thing that we're going to see as our greatest accomplishments are when we're helping our fellow beings, when we're helping the creation. So my universalist idea is that we need to abandon these ideas that there has to be some sort of justice and punishment. Because damnation is nothing more than us making a choice to stop the flow of the blessings from God. God's there with his arms open saying, I'm here. And I love you so much that I'll be here for you for eternity and the eternity after that. But I'll never force you to come to me. You will come of your own free will. Because what joy is there in a gift that's thrust upon us? You're hungry. And someone says, eat. And you say, oh, I don't like that. Well, you say you're hungry, eat. And they start holding you down and forcing food down your throat. I can't imagine that that's what heaven would be like. In order for it to be a free gift, we have to willingly accept it. Otherwise, it's not a free gift. It must be freely offered and freely taken. But I do believe that once we have that eternal perspective, many of us that did wrong things in this life will, through the grace of Jesus Christ, forgive ourselves and forgive those that hurt us and be able to move on and be with God for eternity. I don't believe that hell is a creation of God. I think that hell is a creation of us. It's a place that we choose to create ourselves to be when we choose not to be with God. So no, my idea of universalism is not ultra-universal. It's not extreme universal. But I do believe that it's universalist enough to claim to be a universalist because I refuse to abandon the universalist ideals of free will. But again, these are my thoughts. They're not binding on the fellowship. So what I'd really like to see, I asked you guys to share these videos and, and thumb up videos. I want to know what your thoughts are. What does universalism mean to you? Do you think God's going to force people into heaven? Do you think that there are people that are so wicked here that when we look at all time eternity, that billions of years from now, they still deserve to suffer for the things that they did in this life? I don't think there's any right or wrong answers. But I think that by discussing it, we can find greater truth for ourselves. So that's my Thursday thought with you. I'm sorry. So that's my Thursday thought this week. And I want to leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.